And we are live. Welcome, mystery and thriller fans. I'm your on-air host and author, Sarah DiBello, and I am so excited to welcome tonight the incredible, legendary, best-selling author, Sarah Paretsky, here to give us the inside scoop the night before the book comes out on her 22nd B.I. Warshalski book, Pay Dirt. Sarah, welcome to Mystery and Thriller Mavens. Tell us about this book. Oh, thanks so much, Sarah, for, for that enthusiastic welcome. You know, in some ways, I think that I was prescient about Caitlin Clark because Ooh. the book, which I finished a year ago, finished writing a year ago, everyone like Sarah DeVello, who's written a book, knows that there is a very long lag time between <laughs> when you write the end and when the book is in front of you. Anyway, V.I., poor V.I. Warshawski, she is really down in the dumps for very serious reasons. Her young athlete friends persuade her to come down from Chicago to Lawrence, Kansas, my hometown, and uh, watch Angela Creedy, who's one of these young protégés, break the 3,000-point barrier in an NCAA women's basketball game against the Kansas Jayhawks. So uh, when, I, when Caitlin Clark started scoring and became this phenomenon, um, I thought, oh, I'm too late to rewrite this one passage where VI is identifying with N uh, WNBA star Candace Parker. And I thought, oh, couldn't I have had Caitlin Clark be the person that she's trying to channel? <laughs> but um, but VI is down in Kansas, and it's supposed to be an R&R &R weekend, a spirit building weekend. But one of the young women who she's gone down to, to travel down with disappears. The others have to come back. They have practice, they have classes, and they beg VI to stay and find their missing roommate. And she does. She finds her close to death in a drug house. And instead of being overcome with gratitude, the family, the police, the FBI, they all want to label VI as a kidnapper, a killer, and so on. And so she ends up getting embroiled in this really difficult kind of situation involving ancient grudges over land, ancient um, oh, ancient abuse of the local African-American population, and then contemporary problems having to do with opioid addiction. And um, my favorite character in the new book, aside from VI herself, is a young woman in her 20s, a journalist named Zoe Cruikshank, who's named for the daughter of a I have a friend whose four-year-old daughter, Zoe Cruikshank, has got to be one of those tough girls that you know is going to grow up to save the world. But my Zoe is a journalist. She's committed to old-fashioned journalism, and she teams up with VI, and together they bring these very wicked people to justice, although not before VI comes close to death in an ancient um, coal-powered uh, power plant. Oh my goodness. Well, we have so much to talk about. And I'm sorry, is this this is your 23rd VI? Not 23rd. It's the 22nd. Oh, 22nd. It's my 24th okay. novel, but it's the 22nd VI novel. 22nd yeah. VI. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Well, we have so much to talk about um about this book because it is jam-packed with um rich with history um of of the area of of Can of Kansas. Um, your home state, Sarah, and um, and I am so excited to chat uh, to chat about it. First, I just want to welcome everyone because we are broadcasting live to six different destinations across Facebook and YouTube. So mystery loving friends, no matter where you're watching from, you're in the right place. This is the right time. It is Mystery Monday. And because Mondays can be murder, we're going to make it less painful and get your week off to a killer start here with celebrity author, pioneering um, PI, female PI writer, Sarah Paretsky. So any questions that you have for Ms. Paretsky, get them going in the comments and I will get them right over to her. Randy is joining us from Indiana. He says, hi, Sarah's. Hi, Sarah and Sarah from Indiana. Hi, Randy. I love your black kitty. Very on brand. Um, Donna is joining from Facebook and she says, hi, I love you. Oh, bless um, you. Thank you. 
Yay. We, we, we have so many fans here. Um, she says, love you. Love you. Thank you so much, Donna. Now, Sarah, I want to talk about some of the incredible praise that this book has earned. So none other than Harlan Gobin has deemed you a legend. So let's pop that up so we can all see it. He says, Sarah Paretsky is a legend. If you haven't read her yet, now is the time. Congratulations on that. Tess Gerritsen, who came on for her uh, to give us the inside scoop about her last uh, three books, says Sarah Paretsky's legendary PI is at the top of her game. So Sarah, let's pause there. 22 VI books and oh my goodness, we have award-winning author Tracy Clark, your fellow Chicagoan in the audience, hey, in the house. Tracy just won another writing award last night. Tracy Clark, Queen Clark, has been on the show many times for her incredible incredible books as well. Tracy, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Sarah, from 22 books in, tell us, how do you stay creatively inspired? How do you keep... VI at the top of her game, as Tess Gerritsen is saying. You know, that's a, that is not an easy question to answer and it's not an easy process to follow. But I think what keeps me as fresh as I can be is that I, I don't write about anything unless I feel really passionate about it. So if I was, I worked for 10 years in the insurance industry, I sold computers to insurance agents. I wrote a lot of speeches for corporate executives. I did all those kinds of things. And if I was just going to put VI through her paces and sort of paint by the numbers, I might as well go back to writing speeches and selling computers because at least I had health insurance. Um, so, <laughs> so when VI takes on a crime, it has to be something that I really care about. And the reason that I set pay dirt in Kansas instead of VI's home turf is Chicago, where I've lived for almost, God, has it been yeah, over 50 years help? It's going on for 60 years. Where did all that time go? But um, it deals with property theft. I hope that's not a complete spoiler. But I thought if I said it in Chicago, so much, it's so hard to trace a century of property ownership here. Buildings come, buildings go, there are shell companies. And so I wanted it to be in a more rural community where you could see what was happening more clearly. And But at the same time, then it brings VI to a lot of challenges because she's not on her home turf. She doesn't have her support crew. She doesn't have her usual underworld uh, sources. And, and so she's just put in the frame by everyone for they would love to just blame an outsider for all their problems. and have her go away and their problems would go away with her. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Because trouble follows VI wherever, wherever she goes. Exactly. Now, Sarah, when you started writing VI, there weren't any other female PIs on the scene. It was a male dominated uh, genre written by men with male, entirely male protagonists. You have been a pioneer in this space with a kick-ass, no, take no prisoners, no apologies given, unapologetically sexual, brilliant, bright, courageous character that we have that has all of us rooting for her. I remember when the movie came out and Kathleen Turner played her and I was, it was so thrilling to see, you know, such a powerful woman. Tell us about when you came on the scene and, and you, and you started writing her, um, were you greeted warmly embraced by the genre right away Did the book sell right away? Or was it a struggle for you? Take us back to that first VI book. Well, yeah. So the first VI book was something that I had had in mind. I wanted to create a woman private. eye. had been in my mind for eight years and that's, I am a very slow writer. So it took eight years before the character really came to me. First, I was thinking of just, you know, Philip Marlowe and drag and she was a, my, character VI is not nearly as hard boiled as Miranda Daniels, her predecessor, who I was trying to mold into a female Philip Marlowe. Then we have Sandra Day O'Connor coming onto the Supreme Court. 1982, we had women 
able to join the police force as regular officers in Chicago, New York, San Francisco. Up to that point, they'd just been matrons and in juvie court. So uh, it, it was a long, slow process. And I was trying to do two things. I wanted to create a woman private eye, and I wanted to see if I could write a book from beginning to end. So um, that was that was kind of my challenge, my two challenges. Oh my goodness. Well, it has clearly worked because here we are 22 VI books later, 24 books later. And as the New York Times say, it says, VI to us is perfect and we could not agree more. Now the comments are just blowing up. So let's jump into some of them. Um, we have Margaret joining us from Facebook saying, I have read all VI books. Yay, Margaret. Oh, thank thank you. you, Margaret. And your dog is adorable. Look at that little dachshund. Oh my God, I love dachshunds. Um, we have Liz joining us on Facebook saying, greetings from Canada. I have always loved VI's sense of social justice. How are you feeling about writing in today's U.S. climate? So as Sarah DeVello said at the top of the show, we are facing really serious challenges here. We have libraries uh, having to fight book bans. We have writers across the political spectrum being denied audiences. We have publishers backing away from controversial topics. So this is this is a tough time to take on tough issues. I think crime fiction is kind of the perfect way to address, you know, high profile, difficult social justice issues because crime fiction is where crime happens and it's where we have to confront these things. And also there was a Mexican crime writer, wonderful writer, Paco Taibo, T-A-I-B-O, who said that literature in Mexico is heavily censored, but crime fiction always flew below the radar because the censors didn't take it seriously. And so you could really challenge the prevailing norms, the cartels, the uh, corrupt cops and so on through your crime fiction in a way that you couldn't with so-called uh, mainstream fiction. And I think that's probably true here too. Although I just got my first hate letter for pay dirt saying I didn't get a, you know, and this guy who wrote the hate letter, he got a free book because the books are not on sale yet. So he got something through Goodreads, one of the giveaways. And he says, this was trash. I don't, I don't read mysteries to read about woke politics. It went straight into the garbage can. And I'm like, well, dude, at least you didn't burn it. <laughs> <laughs> at least you have the right to read that book, sir. Right. Oh, Lord, help us. Well, um, Liz, thank you for the great question. Sarah, thank you for the great answer. Renee is joining us from sunny Southeast Florida. Hi, Renee. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Kathleen says, I love Sarah Paretsky and V.I. Warshawski, Mr. Contreras, Mitch and Pepe, Lottie Herschel, etc. I have read every book and I agree with your and V.I.'s ethics and political views. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that support. Beautiful. Robin says, hello, Sarah and Sarah. Hi, Robin. Thank you for joining us. Um, Renee would like to know, Sarah, what kind of dog do you have? Age and name? <laughs> I have a golden retriever. She's almost 12. Her name is Kiara. And um, she's slowing down, but she was in Lake Michigan twice today. So she has nothing to complain about today. <laughs> We're dog people here on Mystery of the Willow Mavis. And Renee, I see you have some goldens there. Look at yeah, those. I know. And they have that. Mm -hmm. You're the golden on your right, my left, has the same white face that my Kiara has now, you know. But that's life. My little rescue mutt has a great, she's a little rescue mutt from Texas. She has a little white face too. It's ma makes them cute. Um, Kathleen says, oh yes, I grew up in Hyde Park in Chicago. So I love your Chicago locations. Yes. Thank you for centering books in Chicago, Sarah. Um, although this one takes place in Sarah's native Kansas. Um, Margaret seconding that saying, I love when you are writing about Chicago places. I recognize them. Oh, that's so wonderful. Jane would like to know, what is Sarah working on now? Well, in Pater, VI takes a terrible beating in every possible way. And so right now she is at a spa in Sardinia recovering. And um, I'm trying something very new for me. It's a slow going as all my books are slow going, I guess. But I have a, a retired CIA agent who um, the CIA is now 
uh, after her because she's spilling secrets that they would rather keep to themselves. So that's that's the new book. <gasps> Writing Ooh. about someone my age instead of someone in their 50s. And we'll we'll just see how that goes. And then I when V.I. Love- is recovered from all of her psychic and physical wounds, she will be back in action. I absolutely love that. And speaking of... Uh, of- of women of a certain age, Tess Gerritsen gave us the spy coast about some retired CIA agents. I absolutely love yes, that. You know, I started work on my book and then I saw hers and I thought, uh, I am not reading that till I finish writing. Cause I just, um, I, you know, she's such a master storyteller and I don't want to be influenced in what I'm trying to do. Although well, the I, person, I have to say the person writing about retired agents who I both love and really am jealous of is Richard Osman. I love those 30 Thursday murder club books. Oh my gosh. They're so great. They are so great. Yes. I'm loving this trend of seeing next chapters and, you know, retirees doing new things. I think it is so fierce and so fabulous. And I can't wait to read yours. We all cannot wait to read yours. Well, I'm blessed. <laughs> Um, Sharon's joining us from Minnesota. Hi, Sharon. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, John's joining us from Northeast Ohio. Hi, John. Mo says, I have read all of your books more than once. I love your writing. That's very kind. Thank you. Donna would like to know, how do you handle a character's aging? I'm always sad when they get to the point where their bones (laughs) are delicate. <laughs> you know, I have sidestepped that issue with, with VI. I, when we started out, we were both 30. Now she's 50 and I'm 76, which I think just proves how much better she is than I am in every way. But I, I wanted to age her because who she is as a person was shaped by the social justice movements of her adolescence as as I was. And then her mother was a refugee from Mussolini's Italy. But as time passed, I thought, I just, I want her to still be physically active in a believable way. And my 50s were my best decade. I was, when I was 50, I was playing ultimate Frisbee with 20 year olds. Now that they would just run over me and pound me into the turf. So I wanted her to stay physically able in a believable way. And then also as you age, you just start experiencing a lot of grief, grief uh, driven losses. And um, I don't want Lottie to die. I don't want Mr. Contreras to die. I want them to, Lottie shouldn't be in the OR of course, but I, I just wanna keep all these people active and part of her life. Because it's hard enough to lose the people in your real life that you're close to. And I thought, oh. Then I got a letter from a reader saying, get over it. Kill them. She'll get new friends. And I was like, <laughs> no. So, it's, oh. I'm too squeamish. <laughs> yeah, please don't kill them. Please don't do that. We want to see them live. Oh, my goodness. Um, Kathleen joining us from Facebook saying, I love you and I love VI. She wants to know, how did you decide to give her a Polish-Italian background? So my background is all the cold northern and eastern European countries, Poland, Lithuania, Holland, Germany, England. And I wanted her to have some warmth. So I gave her the Polish background that was part of my grandfather came from Poland, one of them. And then I gave her an Italian mother so that she could have music and art. Not that there aren't in these cold northern countries, but I wanted her to feel it. Well, as a warm, loving Italian woman... I want to say I love it. <laughs> I'm all about food and family. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to nourish you. We're going to like, you know, embrace Excellent. you. I'm a hugger. <laughs> I love that part. Jill's joining us from Fredericksburg, Virginia. She said, I have read all of your books and I can't wait to read this. Well, what a perfect lead in, Sarah, uh, because Jill, Sarah's book drops tomorrow and she is coming on tonight to give us the exclusive sneak peek. And you can pre-order from our favorite woman-owned independent bookstore. That is, of course, a murder by the book. So whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, here is that link 
link where you can pre-order this gorgeous, luscious red sunset cover, pay dirt, get your fingers clicking. And the good folks at Murder by the Book, our favorite woman-owned independent bookstore, will send you your copy tomorrow morning. We ship internationally. So get your mitts on pay dirt right now, wherever you're watching from. Here is that link. Get it going so you can get your hands on the 22nd VI book. You want to see what, what, what VI gets in to this time. Joy says, I love your books. I have read all of them. Oh, Joy, we love that. Thank you so much. Um, we have so many comments. Oh, so much love for you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, Donna is saying, thank you so much for answering her question. And she says, there is zero reason to keep chronological time. Oh, Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Jill says, as a 52-year-old, I appreciate your comments. Absolutely. Loving this. Um, now, Sarah, I want to talk about some of the other incredible praise that this book has earned from Lisa Gardner, who was just on two weeks ago for her latest, Still See You Everywhere. And she had this word, these words for uh, about your book. She says, V.I. Warshelsky is one of my all time favorite investigators. It doesn't get any better than this. So take that from New York Times. Well, I so admire Lisa. You know, one of the things that I admire about her is, is that she's not afraid to take chances. Like her new series is really, it's so deep with her woman tracking down missing runaways, missing women, the sort of forgotten throwaway women. And really Lisa's example is one of the things that's giving me courage to take this break from VI and try to get Lily, my retired CIA agent now on the run, trying to figure out how you jump out windows when you no longer have all your hips. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lisa took a, her was telling me that she took her first break in 30 years of writing and traveled the world because she wanted to go to all seven continents. She hiked in Australia. She went to um, Antarctica. That was her set, her sixth and seventh continent. And she just said, you know what? I'm not writing for a whole year. I'm just going to travel the world. So Lisa Garner. Well, that's so smart. That's so smart. Dazzles. And, and that the big spiders that are in her book, those are from her so, real life experience. From Australia. I can believe that. My God. Yeah, they have the big spiders over there. And Lisa Gardner is not the only one. Karen Slaughter, who's also been on four times for her books, calls you an author of matchless intelligence, craft, and power. This is why Sarah Paretsky reigns as one of the all-time greats, Karen Slaughter says. Wonderful words of praise there, Sarah, just honoring your incredible body of work, your career. Um, we have a Sergeant Min joining us saying, hello, I am so happy to have a new VI book to read. I love VI and I'm sending you lots of love. Thank you for many hours of reading pleasure. And thank you, Sergeant Min, but I love your graphic there with your, uh, is that a, a Coast Guard? Or, I, or is those, are those the Marines? It looks like that little, I think it's from that animated movie, is, and, and I, but I can't think that everything is awesome. Everything is, I'm not sure. <laughs> we have to say, oh my goodness, we have, uh, thank you for that, Min. Thank you for joining us and for your lovely words of praise for, for Queen Sarah here. Margaret saying, Sarah, I love your glasses and your haircut. I said the same thing. You're so sassy, so fierce. Very <laughs> cool. You make glasses look cool. <laughs> Um, I also wanted to chat about um, Booklist, which awarded you a starred review. Congratulations on earning that. Um, and they talked about your, I'm going to pop this up, significant gifts, sorry, excuse me, phenomenal gifts for significant and riveting stories, lacerating dialogue, rich psychology, and barbed humor reach tornadic forces. What a rave review there. Yeah, that so, was... Sarah, um, can you tell Tell us about your process. Are you a plotter? Are you a pantser? When you said you're a slow writer, I need to know how slow because my book took me 10 years. So tell us all the things. Tell us what it's like a day in the life of Sarah Paretsky. Oh, dear. You know, I used to never talk about process because my process is so embarrassingly tangled. But <clears throat> we had a dog when I was a child who was at war with our... We had one of those old-fashioned two-armed sprinklers and he was at war with that sprinkler. You'd turn it on and the dog and the sprinkler would be 
And that's kind of my process. I feel like I start writing and I'm down and, and the story isn't working. And then I'm throwing out pages and then I'm sitting and trying to figure out how to make the story work. I was privileged to be a friend of P.D. James, who was one of the really great writers in our field. And um, she was an outliner. She said she would outline her book so completely that she would just write the chapter that she was in the mood for on that day. And I, I wish I could think that way. I am not a wow. chess player. I cannot think all those moves ahead. So I have to put my characters in motion. I see what they do. I see whether what they're doing fits their personalities. I see whether I'm telling the right crime story about them. And a lot of times I'm not. With Pay Dirt, the, this book that you will read in three hours or something took me two years and nine drafts. I went back to the beginning nine times before I got to the end. So my process... I wish I had a different process with that. It's my process. Wow. Now, when you say you went back to the beginning nine times, do you mean you changed it dramatically so it didn't open at a ball basketball game? It it, it, it opened in Chicago. It opened in a car. Yes. Was it that it, kind of I, drastic? Yes. I mean, some changes were bigger than others, but the the last complete rewrite completely changed the trajectory of the action. The action remained the same, but the order that events occurred in and, and what different characters were doing completely changed. So, um, yeah, I wish I was a chess playing writer, which is <laughs> how I, I think of myself as a tennis playing writer. You know, I have to hit the ball back as it comes to me and then bounces out and I have to start over again and I'm down love 40 and... <laughs> So you had no idea how this book would end when you started it off. I knew what the crime was. Okay. Um, but I kept fiddling with it, it, the way to show the crime and how to show who was committing it was really difficult. I think the most difficult challenge I've had as in my VI books. Um, and so I kept having to go back and try again and try again and try again. Now, Sarah, are you one of those writers that says, I'm not getting up until I write a thousand words or three chapters or I work for eight hours and I don't care how miserable it is, no breaks? Or are you one of those writers that says, I don't want it to be miserable. I want to, I want it to be joyful. And I'm going to, if, if it's not working, if I'm stuck, I'm going to get up. I'm going to come back when it's flowing. What's that like for you? I'm one of those writers who says, I am going to write a thousand words today. And then I'm getting up, I'm having snacks, I'm walking the dog, I'm sitting back down and writing another sentence. And so far with the new book, I've had 3,000 word days and many days where there's been one or two sentences. So I am a person who makes big promises. <laughs> <laughs> I am also a person who makes big promises and procrastinates embarrassingly long amounts of time. And then I get stressed and miserable. And then I feel like a loser and I'm filled with self-loathing and I <laughs> thrash. And yes, thrash. that's exactly my trajectory. And I have to get to the level of self-loathing where the only cure for it is to sit down and write. Yes, I ha I wrote something in a post-it note and said, the only way through it is to do the thing I dread the most. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Oh, Min is saying that this is a Marines minion. Yes, that's a little minion from that from the um the the that animated movie. Oh, okay. Um, but this is a Marines minion. So I, <laughs> I love that. Thank you for letting us know, Min. Um, Mo says, I love that you put so much heart and soul into your book. Yes, it's amazing, right? Because we're reading an, an inanimate object hewn from the pulp of a tree, and yet you can feel that energy coming through that Mo is putting, that Mo is saying, you can feel that heart and that soul. Is that your heart and soul coming through, Sarah? It, yes, it really is. And that was what I was trying to say earlier when you asked about passion. It has to be my passion in order for the, the book to work. I love that. Donna says, thank you. I love that you admit how very hard to stick with it. Gives the rest of us comfort that even the best are challenged. You don't give up and we shouldn't either. Again, 
Thank you. Well said, Donna. Thank you so much for, for saying that. Mary says, I love VI's fierce determination to make things right or at least better. Fie on those who expect less and try to put strong women in a box. I have read them all and I love her and you more with each book. Oh, Mary, thank you. That is that's very meaningful. I really appreciate that. That is very beautiful, Mary. Thank you so much for being here with us and for, for sharing that. CJ Box, who uh, had some wonderful words of praise as well. He says, I'm going to pop this up so we can all read it. He says, legendary V.I. Warshawski is dogged and ferocious as ever. So is Sarah Paretsky, who, has at the, who is at the top of her crime novel game. Um, absolutely love that. Publishers Weekly saying again, Today's P, oh, sorry, among today's PIs, nobody comes close to Warshawski. Um, the praise just keeps going on and on, Sarah. Do you feel motivated or intimidated by that? You said right before we went live that even 22 books in, you still have those pre pub day jitters the night before the book comes out. Yes, I think the praise, it's deeply meaningful and it's also intimidating because you think, Am I going to disappoint people this time? And, mm. and um, so, yeah. Well, you don't disappoint us. You keep delivering over and over and over. Um, and I think that's, you know, and you and you keep showing up delivering as all of your fans here are saying and with as all of these reviews are saying, just um, just showing up with such heart and such soul. Um, I liked that Library Journal talked about the history of it, saying history buffs, me especially <laughs> as a history buff, will appreciate Paretsky's exploration of Kansas's violent past, while VI fans will be eager to read the latest in the award-winning series after Overboard. Now, um, Sarah shares in the, in the back of the book what two books she read that actually in, in, inspired, that she drew from, um, for this, drawing very heavily on the history of Kansas. Sarah, tell us a little bit about that. So, yeah, I talk about this in the in the book postscript. I My family moved to Kansas from New York State when I was four, and this was the 1950s. It was the centennial of bleeding Kansas when Kansas pro-slavery, anti-slavery forces were fighting over whether Kansas would be a free state or a slave state. And we loved it. We loved celebrating the centennial. We girls got to act out the anti-slavery women who sold, who sewed bullets into their crinolines to get them past the slavers <laughs> who were controlling access to Kansas territory. But it was only later and really relatively recently that I learned that this anti-slavery fervor also had a very ugly side. And that was that a lot of the abolitionists who settled Kansas were actually um, not anti-slavery per se. They just didn't want Kansas to have slavery that might compete with white workers. So that was that was daunting. Then I read two books that just inspired me from opposite ends of the of the emotional spectrum, so to speak. One was about three women, two white women, and Harriet Tubman, who worked together in the years going up to the Civil War and through the Civil War. Uh, and was one of the inspiring things was is that there were women's anti-slavery movements that had black leadership and white women were totally comfortable with following black leadership. And, you know, I don't know where we went wrong with that. But anyway, um, and then these two women, two white women put their own fortunes at Harriet Tubman's disposal to help fund the the work that she was doing through the Underground Railroad. So that was one positive. And then the negative was this book I read by Brett Campney, which said, no, guess what? Lynch mobs were not an exclusive Southern thing. They were active throughout the Midwest, throughout my Kansas. There was a lynching in Kansas every week somewhere in the state between 1865 and 1935. So I was wow. like, is yeah, I know it's horrific, and you I think I didn't know that. I don't. Nobody knew it till Brett started d delving into the archives and making all this clear. So I thought, okay, I need to go back to Kansas and really think about this history and try to wed this history, both 
positive, these abolitionists, and negative, these lynch mobs. I need to try to see if I can put that together with a contemporary mystery. And I think that's why it took me two years to write this book and so many drafts is because it was actually not the easiest combination that I could have chosen. But it's so meaty and meaningful. I love that. I love reading. And I think exactly as you said at the beginning of the interview, crime fiction is the perfect place to 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 weave in this information because you can be wildly entertained and yet leave the pages of the book enriched and more knowledgeable. And what how perfect is that? Kathleen saying, I liked Bleeding Kansas and the foreword, saying that women abolitionists sewed bullets in their crinolines. Never forgot that. Very cool. Um, well, y'all, the book, again, Washington Post. Oops, sorry, you want to get back to this one. Um, Marilyn Stasio with the New York Times review called VI a proper hero for these times. To us, VI Warshelsky is perfect. Um, Seattle Review of Books saying VI Warshelsky is on top form. The reviews go on and on and on. Um, and you can pre-order the book tonight and the good folks at Murder by the Book will send it to you first thing in the morning. Here again is that link. Sarah Paresky is a pioneer in this space and um, we thank you for your incredible um, 22 VI books, 24 books, your forthcoming CIA book, which I cannot wait to read, um, and your leadership in this space. You continue to uh, to illuminate, inspire, and 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 uplift us. Sarah Paretsky, um, you are a true inspiration and a legend. Thank you so very much. Um, Y'all, thank you so much for pre-ordering um, and for getting your copies. And thank you for joining us for this exclusive sneak peek with the legendary Sarah Paretsky on Pay Dirt. Sarah Paretsky, thank you so much for joining us. It has been an honor and a privilege to interview you. Sarah Novello, thank you so much. Thanks for your energy. <laughs> love it. Yay. Um, Min saying, also, thank you for sharing all of your knowledge and opening up my eyes to authors like Anna Catherine Green who I'd never heard of, and Raymond Chandler, too. Thanks. What a perfect note to end on. Thank you so much. Y'all, happy Mystery Monday. May the days and the pages fly by. I will see you next Monday. Take very good care. Until then.